We're here on the campus of the University of Southern California. But we're not here to talk about college of, of any kind other than, than to say that Los Angeles is the only city to have three universities in the top 25 of the U.S. News and World Report, USC, UCLA, and Caltech. Um, the name of our show is Los, Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> you came up with that title, Erica. Why did you call it Lost Sandalus? You know, uh, both Professor Sanchez and I have been going back and forth over, over what is it to live here in LA. And for me, my experience living in East LA has been very different uh, and than his. And so going back and forth, uh, debating on how we were going to do this project, how we were going to showcase what is LA, uh, I realized that a lot of it is lost. No one really knows and there's so much to unearth and I'm really happy to be here with Professor Sanchez and really uh, unearth this mystery of what is Los Angeles to most of us. We're going to Exposition Park where we're, in you're in for a treat, Erica. Okay, well I'm excited. And uh, have you ever been to Exposition Park? Oh, maybe well, a long time. It's been a while, I think since, you know, elementary. Field trip. Yep, yep, I remember going to the Natural <laughs> History Museum on a field trip. That seems to be everyone's uh, recollection. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see that the Exposition Park is not the same Exposition Park than it was years ago. Oh, I bet. So much changed as we get ready for the Olympics to come to Los Angeles in 2028. Los Angeles will be the only city that will have hosted the Olympics three times. What do you think about well, that? Well, we gotta come back then too. Yeah, we gotta get our ticket. That's what we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that backdrop of the Natural History Museum. It's another lost part of LA. Los Angeles. <laughs> Discovering Los Angeles, that's yeah. what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a beautiful moment. I mean, this is a beautiful time. And this is a beautiful city. If people allow it to be, you know? Yeah. If they go looking for it. And uh, this Rose Garden is, is magnificent. It's been here for nearly 100 years. Really? Yeah. Okay. And it was uh, uh, funded by the State Parks and Recreation in 1927. So we're going way back, almost 100 years. Wow. And uh, this will be nice. I'm sure this will be nice and kept up by the uh, time the Olympics are here in 2028. Yeah. Well, let's go figure out why people are here. Coming on, I see a couple of tourists. Okay, let's go. Okay. So what is your name? My name is Kevin Salafini. Kevin, nice to meet you. So how, for how long have you been living here? Uh, all my life. All, all your life? life? Yeah. So what does this represent? To you, like the whole, you know. Uh, pretty much a safe haven. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you just walk around in peace. Okay. Yeah. What is your thoughts on LA overall? On your LA? perspective? Uh, it's a mix of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. It's can't move out. You have to stay here. <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. And cool. is it places like this that make it all worthwhile? Uh, yes, yeah, just the people that like it brings, you know, like you uh, you socialize with everybody that's around from all over the world that comes to this one section. Awesome. Yeah. Is it anything that you'd like to tell uh, the viewers out there about LA and maybe the Rose Garden in particular? Um, shoot through, you're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Eric Hartung. Eric, okay, cool. Nice to have you here. And it's really interesting perspective because you've come here without kids. So tell, tell me, why is it that you've decided to come here besides the fact that you're a science teacher? I mean, is there any other 
reason. Well, I wanted to see the dog exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, I come here a couple of times during the year with students, and it's always so busy. It's a little bit quieter on the weekends. Okay. Um, so it's yeah. the ability to spend more time. I like the environments uh, exhibit, mm -hmm. uh, especially the aquarium area. Um, I've seen the Endeavor multiple times, so I mean that's a great draw for a while. But um, mostly, I like the exhibits here, and it's an opportunity to look at stuff. Sometimes I learn some things, like hmm, I wonder if I can integrate that in my classroom. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, it's a nice day out here. Yes. Do you live around here? I live in the valley. Okay. In the valley. Oh, so it is a drive for you. Yeah, 20 minutes, 20 30 minutes, minutes on traffic, a Sunday. Right? Yeah. So is that the trick, coming on, on a Sunday? <laughs> the weekend's the better time to come here. Okay. The, week, the weekdays, it's very busy here. Uh, there's lots of school trips and, uh, you know, field trips coming out here. So uh, if you want a little bit more peace and quiet, come on the weekends. Okay, Although perfect. I probably shouldn't divulge that secret. <laughs> <laughs> I am here with Shelly Bruce here at the California a African American Museum. Shelly, tell us a little bit more about the museum and its mission. Absolutely. Um, it's really important to note the California African American Museum where this exhibit is housed. Um, it's the only state-funded African American Museum in the country. So there's no other state in the U.S. that has a state-funded African American Museum. So we're really, really here to promote and preserve the history and culture and art of African Americans. And so it's a free institution. Uh, that mission is free here, as well as all of our public programs are free. So we have five galleries. We always have five exhibitions running each season. And uh, we're just really happy and to, to let let folks know that even if they're not able to come to the museum that they know that this is a free resource for kids, adults, everyone in between to, to learn and to appreciate artists who often haven't been shown in mainstream and western um, art museums and galleries. So it's really important that we have this space that can honor the work of African American artists and um, also honor the history of African American culture, African -American culture that's not often depicted. And it's a very rich culture that gives so much to our community. Thank you very much, Shelly. I'm here with TJ Walker, the original founder of Cross Colors. What in the world made you start Cross Colors, TJ? <laughs> well, we, Carl Jones and I, we started call, uh, Cross Colors out of a need. We saw that was in the market for, you know, a company that actually represented people of color. So we saw that void and we wanted to actually fill that. And that's why we really started Cross Colors. Okay, and what brings you back in 2019? Well, we brought it back because we saw a trend towards 90s product in general, 90s product. And people were actually contacting us and asking us for the product. Uh, and because also we got the logo back too as well. It basically came back home to us after so many years. So with that all making sense, like it did back in the 90s, we decided to actually relaunch the brand. One thing I've noticed about the color scheme here is there's very many color schemes, but they're all very pleasant to the eye. Did you did you plan that? Yes, actually, we actually selected the colors based on a few things. And one was that every color to us meant something, especially the ones that are actually in our logo itself. The red meant the blood of the people. The black meant for the, the people themselves. The green was for the earth. And then the yellow is for the sun. So those colors initially were basically the primary colors that actually all the other colors are actually derived from. And if all the colors, do they add up to a sum, whole, or what would you say to that? Oh, I, you know what? The thing is our tagline is clothing without prejudice. So we wanted to know that it was for everyone and there is really no color divide in terms of colors. It's multicolor. And that's why we did the color blocking because we could actually infuse and put different colors next to each other, block them, you know, do different sections in terms of the garments so we can actually show people too in terms of unity what that really stands for. And cross colors is what that is. Well, TJ, thank you very much. Thank you not just for this interview, but what, for what you're doing with Cross Colors and how you're extending throughout the community of Los Angeles and throughout the world. No, thank you. Thank you so very much. Just want to show you one more thing. Oh, great. One more thing. Look at this. Well, it's you're got pretty red. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, maybe next time I'll dress up like a, you know, have a, all kinds of gear, like an astronaut or something. Right. Well, you know, uh, we're in the uh, science building here on the campus. Uh, you know that in 1968, Neil Armstrong, an alumnus of USC, uh, went on a simulated flight that went out of control and he had to eject 200 feet above the ground. It nearly killed him, but it didn't. And you know what he did? No, what? After that, got up, dusted himself off, and he went back to work. He said, well, it didn't kill me. I figured it was the thing to do. And later on, the next year, he became the first man to walk on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.